Alfino, it is good to see you. Tell me, what have you learned? Pray summon the others. Everyone must hear my report. So this was all but a taste of what's to come. Indeed. The main host advances upon Ishgard as we speak. Whose vaunted defenses have been nullified? Shorn of its wards, the city will bear the full force of Nidhogg's fury. All those people... Alfino is right. The Dravanians cannot be allowed to prevail. If Ishgard falls, all of Eorzea will suffer the consequences. Then you agree that we have no choice but to intervene. For the good of the realm, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn and the Crystal Braves must join the defense of Ishgard. Let there be no ambiguity about what has been proposed. We would be directly intervening in the war. But if all here believe the cause to be just, then to war we shall go. The path we now embark upon is perilous, but I pray you will walk with us to the end. For those we have lost, for those we can yet save, Then it is settled. I shall inform the Council of our intentions, and request that they contribute their own forces to the defense of Ishgard.
We are well aware of Ishgard's dilemma, and we agree with your assessment. Then I trust there are no objections to the Crystal Brave's intervention. Uldar has not... Gridonia does not object. The Crystal Braves are yours to command, Alfino. Do what you will. We shall pray for your success. It was my hope that you would offer more substantial aid than prayer. I know it is within your means. Do not presume that you have knowledge of our every concern. The Garlians and the Beast Tribes are but two of many. We are not in a position to contribute greatly to the defense of Ishgard. Not when our own homes are still under siege. We dare not leave our interests in Cartano undefended as well. Telegi Adelegi and his ilk would seize control of the territories in our absence. The enemy is at their gates and you would cower behind yours? No one is cowering, boy. We will offer what support we can. Aye, support. A handful of men and no more. Would that we could commit more than a token force to this cause. Yet there are others to whom you might turn. The free companies ever want for work. Ah, yes. The free companies. They're not like to turn you down. I beg your pardon? You would entrust the survival of Ishgard to sell swords? Crises like these are the very reason why this alliance was formed. It is our duty to aid our fellow man. My duty is to my country and my people. If you expect us to place the welfare of a foreign power above our own, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Lest you doubt, Limsa comes first, then the alliance, and finally, circumstances permitting, Ishgard and the rest. If you cannot understand so simple a concept, then you have no place at this table. Forgive me, Admiral. I was 
careless in my choice of words. I suggest you assemble a party of elite adventurers, assuming you haven't already. Your fellows served us well during Operation Archon. I dare say they will do so again. If I may, Your Grace, I wish to propose a redistribution of forces. If we entrust the security of Uldar to the Brass Blades for a time, we can dispatch a larger force to Ishgard. Your Grace? Yes. Yes, of course. Do what you will. Is her grace not feeling well? To the best of my knowledge, her grace is in perfect health. I see. Carry on.
O oh, Salton Tree, hallowed spirit of my line. Through my weakness, the glorious house of Ul has all but disappeared beneath the sands. For want of the strength to raise it up again, it were better that it fall. Forgive me, but I know not what else to do. You needn't trouble yourself, so. Your grace is most kind, but it is no trouble to me, rather an honor. 
If your grace is ready, I shall summon the Warrior of Light. I am. Everyone looks to be in high spirits. With good cause. A common victory may serve to unite even the most unlikely of allies. You've brought us one step closer to a united Eorzea. Your modesty knows no bounds, Antecedent. Were it not for your efforts, Sir Emmerich would never have become such a steadfast ally. When he convinces his countrymen to rejoin the Alliance, we shall all reap the benefits, military and economic. I tell you, we are on the cusp of a new era of unity and prosperity. Territorial disputes are all that divide us now. But I have faith that we will find an amicable solution in time. And failing that, I'll have my trusty warrior of light box the ears of all concerned. Speaking of whom... She will be joining us shortly. A matter at the quicksand required her attention, but it did not sound serious. Enter. Your Grace, your guest has arrived. Pray come in and take your ease. Is well that the steps of faith held against the horde. And what of the city proper? We sustained some few losses, but the heart of our nation yet beats with vigor. I am not certain I could say the same had we not received your most generous aid. An attack on Ishgard is an attack on the realm. We stand together or fall divided. Such noble words, after the fact.
I had hoped to speak in the presence of her grace, but it seems she has been delayed. That being the case, now would seem as good a time as any. Honored friends, pray allow me to convey Ishgard's warmest gratitude for your part in the defense of our lands. Tis upon the success of this very alliance that my recommendation to throw open the gates of judgment shall be founded. With the blessing of the Archbishop, it is my hope that Ishgard will soon be reunited with her long-estranged sister nations, and that Eorzea shall once more be as one. Very well. Is all to miss? Nothing to worry about. I shall return anon. Wished a word, Yu Yu Hase? You may go. Your Grace. You must be curious as to the reason for this private audience. The matter I would discuss, however, will soon make apparent the need for discretion. I intend to abdicate the throne and dissolve the monarchy. You have seen for yourself the storm of turmoil that howls through our streets. The government fails in its responsibilities, and my subjects suffer the consequences of our incompetence. But I will see them suffer no longer. The victory feast shall provide the stage on which I declare the dissolution of the Sultanate. It is mine intent that the ruling class of our golden city should take its place beside the common man in a fair and equitable republic. No more shall this nation bow to the whims of a privileged few. Yet, that which I propose will entail the tearing up of this city's very foundations. And even Roban, with all his strength and influence, will be hard-pressed to keep his footing on such treacherous ground. Thus would I ask you to lend him a steadying hand. You who have endured the wrath of innumerable foes are the one hero in whom I can place my trust. Will you do this thing for me? I am truly grateful. More grateful than I can well express. Much of my dread for the coming days has been quieted.
place. Her Grace, the Sultana, is dead. Poison in her wine? You! You did this! Spare us your denials! I see no other suspects, and the room has but the one entrance. I hereby accuse you of regicide! Men, arrest this viper! Sir, barring a few exceptions, we have detained all those with allegiance to the Scions. The Rising Stones is also under our control. What do you hope to achieve with this mutiny? Why, that which we have striven for all along, Commander. The salvation of Eorzea. of this. Knights from the homeland. This cannot bode well. Lord Commander, we have received an urgent message from the Holy See. I am grieved to report that your serpentine foes have resumed their assault. Needless to say, your presence is urgently required. These knights have come to bear you swiftly home to Ishgard. A surprise attack. We've had no such word from our men, and the timing is most fortuitous to catch us away from the city. Most fortuitous indeed. Lord Commander, we must away! You have been a most gracious host. I hope that I might one day return the favor. Come, Lucia. What is going on in there? Ah, the ever dutiful brass blades. I must apologize, but my dance guard is rather full. Another time, perhaps? Thancred, of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. You stand accused of committing acts of espionage in service to the Galian Empire. Espionage? What in the seven hells are you talking about? Ah, 
If you're referring to that business with the Ultima weapon, then you must understand. I, I wasn't myself. Under interrogation, an Imperial prisoner revealed your involvement in numerous dealings with the enemy. We've also been investigating reports that you are a practitioner of forbidden arts. You best come along with us. You invite me to your party and now you want me to leave? I do so detest receiving mixed signals. Come then. I believe I've lost my appetite for this farce of a celebration. Too far, Lord Adelegi. By what right do you march armed soldiers into a royal banquet and eject state visitors without her grace's consent? You treat the brass blades as your personal army and show contempt for the throne with your every act. Leave us. Now. Is that an order, General? Mayhap you have mistaken me for one of your flames! You will find I am not so slavishly obedient. <laughs> and you lecture me on personal armies! As for your outrageous claim that I have shown contempt for the throne, let all here observe that it was not I who feasted while an assassin removed its occupant. I expect this is your idea of defending the nation, is it? This and diluting our forces through these distractions in Cartano and Curthus. I do begin to see how the ranks of the immortal flames came to be riddled with Garlean sympathizers. You are plainly unfit for command. Wait. Wait, gods damn you. Your words make no sense. What assassin? You mean to say you don't know? We caught the vaunted champion of the Scions in Her Grace's private chambers, not moments after the deed was done. No! No, this cannot be! Save your breath! You will need it to plead your case. You and your entire order are to be tried for this atrocity. in the prisoner This woman stands accused of poisoning her royal majesty Nanamu Ulnamo and is suspected accessories to the crime all members of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn will be detained for questioning. This is madness! What a pity. Who'd have thought your tale would end like this? Should you demand further proof, a vial with traces of the substance used to poison her grace was found upon the assassin's person. How very convenient. You would speak of convenience? Who persuaded Her Grace to host this celebration? A diversion which presented you and your confederates ample opportunity to commit the crime, and a crowd within which to fade from view. A more convenient occasion I could scarcely imagine. How dare you, after all we have done for Uldar! Hold your tongue, witch! I'll not be ensorcelled! I know all about the dark gift that you and your disciples wield. 
Oh, yes. I've observed how you worked upon the minds of the Alliance leaders, bending them to your will. And what of your cordial relationship with Sir Emmerich? For years, Ishgard abjured all contact with the outside world, and now the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights treats you with the familiarity of a childhood friend. I'll tell you what I think. I think this desperate defense of Ishgard was but a ruse to deceive us into dividing our forces. Your next move will be to charm your Curthen allies into invading our lands. Now that is truly ridiculous. How do you even think of this stuff? She... she cannot be dead. Stand aside, Ilbert. I want to see the Sultana. Spare yourself the pain, brother. I saw her with my own eyes. For a mercy, the poison took her swiftly. Her handmaiden can attest to that. This cannot be. Nanamo. Nanamo. No! Plainly, the Royalists can no longer be relied upon to keep our nation safe. And so it falls to the monetarists of the Syndicate to govern Uldar. But should you wish to help us, General, we would be more than happy to entrust the task of planning Her Grace's funeral to you. It seems only right that you should bury your precious Sultana, and we will be glad to be rid of that burden. I'll bet you will. You more than any man. Whatever do you mean? I mean you had her killed, you black-hearted bastard! <laughs> what rot! <laughs> Though I did have sufficient motive, tis true. That young lady caused me no end of grief. She always was a most unwilling puppet. I dare say her grace was grateful that someone thought to cut her strings. You would mock her, then mock her from hell! <laughs> Lost your mind, General? It is forbidden to draw steel in the royal chambers, much less slaughter our fellow syndicate members. <gasps> You're one of them! You've been in league with the Scions all along! You! You're next, you scheming bastard! Admiral, we must leave. Ah. Uh, 
How unlike you, old friend. I did not expect to take your arm so easily. Take the Scions into custody. They have conspired to commit regicide. And arrest this traitor as well. Ilbert, I hope you choke on their coin. It's better than the dirt I've supped on these long years. We can't all abandon Alamigo and become great war heroes as you have. You are not the man you once were, Roban. Since that girl strapped the yoke around your neck, you've become docile. She took the mad bull and cut off his balls, and a bull that cannot rot is fit for naught but slaughter. Shall I tell you who really killed your precious Sultana? It was me. You... You die! I never doubted you, not for a moment. But there is more to this than I yet understand. Flee this place. Clear your names. Find out who is behind this plot. It is the only way. Now go! You are. Sancred, where have you been? Avoiding the fumbling advances of some very persistent admirers. When I realized the celebrations had turned sour, it seemed prudent to slip away and take stock of the situation. It would appear that much of the city is already under tight guard. It occurs to me that expanding the Brass Blade's authority may not have been such a wonderful idea after all. The success of this plan was contingent upon those thugs having the run of the place. Just how long has this scheme been in motion? The careful preparations, the maneuvering of forces. I am inclined to agree with the General's insistence that a deeper plot exists here. So, would I be right in thinking we now have an excuse to pummel as many brass blades as we like? Unless you plan on pummeling them all, I'm not sure that will greatly aid our cause. The Sultana's assassination was but one part of the scheme. We two were its targets. 
and though we did not share Pornonimo's fate, we are yet hobbled by the charges laid at our door. Where now might we seek refuge? Where indeed, we may safely assume that our foe is thought to have the Rising Stones watched. Forgive me for stating the obvious, but our choice of destination will matter little if we cannot secure an escape route out of Ulda. Happily, I believe I can provide one. Papashan once told me about the passages hidden in the walls of the palace. If I recall correctly, the fireplace in Anima's chambers conceals the entrance to a tunnel. It should lead outside the city and allow us to avoid any messy confrontations. If you go on ahead, I'll handle this lot. By yourself? Oh, I suppose I shall just have to join you. Crystal Braves too, huh? Now this should be interesting. Ida! Papalimo! We will hold our pursuers here. Hurry, now! Find this tunnel of Thancreds! Minfilia, we cannot linger! Look what you've done! Ida, are you all right? There are just too many of them! I'm fine. I could do this all day. How about you? Nearing the end of my tether. between this realm and the evil that's trying to destroy it. And if you think we'll leave the stewardship of Eorzea to the likes of your masters, then you're solely mistaken. Sorry I dragged you into this, Popolimo. <laughs> Tis hardly the first time. And I'll be damned if it will be the last! I 
was hoping you'd say that. I never knew such a watercourse existed beneath Uldar. The architecture is of the Sildene style, if I'm not mistaken. The ancients plainly foresaw the need for a ready means of escape. Way. Well, that didn't take long. It seems these tunnels were not as secret as I had hoped. You two, go on ahead. Thancred and I will deal with this. Wha what do you mean to do? Only that which is required to ensure that the dawn's light survive to brighten the morrow. Fear not, Antecedent. You haven't seen the last of these fair features. My friends! Leave us! What is the plan, milady? Shall I take the dozen on the left and you the dozen on the right? The odds are not exactly stacked in our favor. Numbers will count for little when I bring the tunnel down upon their heads. Though I cannot say I relish the thought of being entombed with you for all eternity. You wound me. I will have you know that many a maid would kill for the chance to spend forever at my side. Now, may I have the last dance? Going splendidly. Now would be a good time, milady. It is done. I must remain behind, but you cannot stay with me. Please, you must go on. 
You are the warrior of light. You are hope for the Scions and for all the realm. As long as your flame continues to burn, the light of the dawn may ever be relit. You must escape and save Eorzea from those who would plunge it into darkness. Tis the only way. I am glad to see you safe, my friend. What of the others? Damn that man! Taleji played me for a fool! I thought the Crystal Brave's mine till the very moment I felt the blade at my back. There will be ample time for soul searching later. For now, we must put some moms between us and Ulda. Well, would you look who it is? Need a ride? I doubt it'll be half as exciting as the last trip we took. Not if I have anything to say about it anyway. It's not Dordal, eh? All aboard! Supplies over in Vesper Bay, you see, when your sister came up and begged a favor. Said her brother was having some trouble down in Uldar and likely needed a helping hand getting away. I think in them ruins would make a fine hiding place. I decided to try there first. And lo and behold, there you were. Aye, and judging by them soldiers as we're pouring out of the city. I arrived not a moment too soon. Ha! <laughs> Must have been fate that we happened to find you there, though, eh? I had thought to look out for Alize, but would appear she was the one watching over me. I've made such a mess of things. You be, young sir. Pippin Tarrowpin, 
Vice Marshal of the Immortal Flames. I had been on the Alamegan front these past few moons, but an urgent communication called me back to Uldar. Scarce had my boots touched the cobbles, though, when the streets erupted with cries of assassination. I immediately went in search of answers, and came across Master Alfino here. Needless to say, I did not think his imprisonment justified. The blame plainly lies with the Monetarists. Their greed and corruption are well known to me. But for them to take advantage of the situation with such alacrity... Was that Pippin, you said? Ain't that the name of General Alden's lad? Yes, I am his son. Adopted, of course. It was only as we were leaving Uldar that I learned of father's fate. Once I have seen you a safe distance away, I mean to return to the city and extricate him from this madness. Then you needn't travel no further than Blackbrush. Our fugitives have a friend waiting for them there. I dreamed of bringing about Eorzea's salvation, but in the end... It was I who needed saving. There has been word from the capital. Ishgard has weathered another assault, and tis said several wyverns broke through into the city proper. The Temple Knights succeeded in slaying the beasts, but the intrusion prompted orders to further strengthen the guard, and to place the city under a perpetual state of alert. How keenly we feel the loss of our wards at the Gates of Judgment. Yet we must not bemoan our misfortune. Sir Emmerich is safely returned from Uldar, and once more leads the defense of Ishgard. As for the matter of your asylum, I am afraid no progress will be made until the threat to our nation is diminished. But do not despair. You are not without allies. You are more than welcome to shelter here for as long as you wish. Pray. Think of it as a new headquarters of sorts, the falling snows or some such. All frivolity aside, any who come here in search of you will receive no aid from House Fortom. For once, the Ishgardian reputation for inhospitality shall work in our favor. 
agents of Uldar will find their every inquiry dismissed and their every request for entry rebuffed until such time as their masters have acknowledged your innocence. You once fought to preserve the honor of my dear friend. Tis a blessing that I may now repay that debt in kind. But let us dwell no more on this. Pray, join the rest of your companions. Tis bitterly cold this day. I suspect there are those who might welcome the warmth your presence brings. has been arranged as you desired, my lord.
<laughs> Thou thinkest sanctuary lieth beyond. Delusion. Despair. Death. Thou shalt find naught else here. The dawn's light will shine again. So long as we have these specious accusations hanging over us, we will struggle to achieve anything. You must go to Ishgard, as Tataru proposed. I will return to Uldar and set things right. Pray, do not be so hasty, Master Elfino. Lord Orshafon. Full well do I understand your desire to clear your names. But now is not the time for drastic action. You yet have allies upon whom you can rely. There is no need to act alone. Yes. Yes, of course. Pray forgive my impatience. I bring tidings. Count Edmont has decreed that the three of you be taken in as wards of House Fortarm. Under our patronage, you shall be granted access to the city proper. Pray, consider our manor your new headquarters, from which you may gather information and plan how best to proceed. Needless to say, should any of your missing allies be found, as I am certain they shall, they will of course be welcome to join you there. You are more than generous, my friend. On behalf of my fellows, I humbly accept your offer of hospitality. The Count is a good man, and just. He will treat you with the kindness and respect that a hero and dear friend deserves. To Ishgard, then. Together. There we shall carry on the Scion's legacy. There we shall begin anew.
and so they came, at a friend's behest. Heroes, once celebrated as saviors of Eorzea, brought low through treachery, their names blackened with royal blood. With memories of the lost and dreams of redemption, with hope yet in their hearts, they came. To Ishgard, shining city on the mount, overlooking the dominion of Curthus. A great and proud nation, devoted to Halone, the Fury, ruled by Thordon VII, Archbishop of the Ishgardian Orthodox Church. The last bastion of the faith her walls ever bristling with the sworn swords and spears of her four high houses. A land that after a thousand years of war had forgotten what it was to be at peace. Through gates long closed, the warrior of light and her companions passed, entering at last a city whose history was written in blood. In the midst of the Dragon Song War they came, three weary travelers whose arrival would set in motion great change. Though none knew then how great. So 
I'm gonna take this teleport and then I'm gonna end this. You watch whole video. I'm gonna say congratulations. It was long. Next one won't be this long. I hope, maybe. I prefer like one hour, but if you guys wanna see longer episodes, I can do it, because I play like 8 hours a day in this game, I won't record everything. Bye.